Hey, hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to configure OpenID Connect based authentication between GitLab and AWS. As you know, OIDC Connect is a secure passwordless connection that you can establish between a CACD provider and a cloud. So, in my previous video, I have explained, like, you know, how you can do the OIDC authentication using GitHub Actions and AWS and Azure. Now, in this video, I'm targeting another tool called GitLab, which is very famous. So on GitLab, if you want to connect to AWS with using secure passwordless authentication, then OIDC is the one of the method that you can achieve, right? So in this video, I'm going to focus on a, like how you need to set up the from AWS side, how you need to configure from the GitLab side. Finally, when you use these setups, how you can achieve the Open ID connects based authentication between GitLab and AWS, right? So basically, the flow of this video would be something like this. Okay, so what we do is I'm gonna show you in the AWS side how you need to create an Open ID Connect identity provider, especially for GitLab, and how you can use that, you know, um, Open ID provide Open ID Connect identity provider in a in a AWS IAM role, so that you know it can be trusted from the GitLab. So basically, how you can add the IAM role trust, right? So that it could be trusted from the GitLab side, GitLab side, and and give the required permissions, right? Yeah. So that's the that's how you know the uh, the flow would be uh, basically. So the if I tell you in a in a in a very layman term, the connection and the how does the authentication and the handshake that will be established between GitLab and AWS is something like this. Okay. For example, say you have a developer and developer is working on a GitLab. You know, he's actually you know making some code change committing to the gitlab and also you know whenever he commits the gitlab right so automatically let's say you have defined the workflow of gitlab in a such a way that when you push the some code changes in the gitlab automatically it invokes the pipeline basically it invokes the cicd then then in the cicd we declare saying like you know if you know if the cicd is invoked to authenticate to the aws you know you have to use the oidc authentication so where the OIDC, I know basically OpenID Connect is a kind of identity provider which actually provides a secure token to the GitLab with using that token plus the you know the IAM role ARN that we configure on the GitLab CACD will be used together and it will take that same thing to the AWS. And based on this OIDC provided JWT token, you know, the AWS authorizes it and gives the access token back to the GitLab. And with using that, you know, AWS goes and get the connections to the AWS, right? So here we are not storing any credentials. We are just, you know, using the you know, open ID based connection, uh, you know, connection to authorize with the AWS, right? So with this method, you know, once you are authorized, you can do a deployment, you can do an infrastructure as a code, you can do automations, right? Anything could be done. But here the positive and the advantage is, you know, you, it's purely secure and, and, you know, passwordless. Yeah. All right. So that's the basic overview about my demo. Now let's go and see how you can see these configuration or how you can make this configuration on the AWS side and on the GitLab side. And finally, how does these two connect together and does the required job? Yeah. All right. So I will take you to the first of the AWS account. So this is my AWS accounts currently in IAM service. Yeah. And if I go to the identity provider, I will let me go to the identity provider. As of now, I have a two identity providers. One is the EKS based identity provider. Other one is the, you know, the GitHub user content, which is a github open id connect you know identity provider yeah so now in my case i'm interested for gitlab right so let's go and click on the provider and here choose open id connect and here in the provider url you just paste like you know gitlab.com in the audience as well you again have to put the same you know string like https colon for slash github.com and then click on a then 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 click on the get thumbprint once the thumbprint is retrieved for that particular uh, you know provider click on add provider so once it is added you see you know gitlab.com is added successfully as a provider for in your aws account right so currently you know you see that gitlab.com is been added right now once the identity provider is registered in your iam services you can use it to construct a iam role in which you will be configuring the trust policies in a such a way that you know that role will be trusted by particular that particular identity provider so how do we configure that this is a very important part as well and this is a only one time job okay 
So when it is a one-time job, basically you can do it uh, with using manual. You don't need to write a code and all. Yeah, that's what I, I believe. So let's click on the, you know, I have already pre-created an AWS OIDC connect for, I, you know, um, GitLab. I'll just walk you through that. So basically it's just like an, any other IAM role. You just go to the role, create a normal role. And to that role, you will add some permissions here. I have given administrative privilege because this is a secure passwordless, right? And that's the reason I've just given a blanket access. Yeah, just, just for the demo purpose. And if you go to the trust relationship, that is where the major chunk is. Instead, this is very, very important. You know, you need to configure the trusted identities very correctly so that, you know, the GitLab can, you know, consume this uh, and, and, and establish the required connections. Yeah, the format here is it's a JSON, you know, it's just a JSON uh, content actually. So here the version is, you know, you will have, you will be providing the versions. And in the statement, you see, this is a, a policy statement. In that one, we have one statement called effect equal to allow. In the principles, you know, here principles is federated. In the principle, if you see here, so I'm just providing the, the identity provider here. And if I go back to the, um, so let me duplicate this, this page actually. So if I duplicate this, I'm going to show you that, you know, from where did I get this federated ARN? Yeah? I will go to the identity provider. This is, this is the identity provider. Click on that. Here is the ARN that you need to copy. You copy here. And if I go to the edit trust, so I'm going to replace it that. So basically this is how you need to keep that value. So this is how it looks. And after that, the principal is federated with the value, something like this. And in the action, we are giving assume role with the web identity. Okay. So here STS colon assume role with the identity actions will be given for this GitLab. Yeah. And in the condition, so why do are we adding the conditions? Because if we allow only these two properties in the sense, it will be, it can be authorized from any other GitLab basically, yeah? any other GitLab uh, you know, repositories. So to narrow down and make it to a specific repository from specific branch, you will be adding a conditions. So that conditions format is something like this, which is inside the string echoes. Then you have the gitlab.com sub that is a, uh, that is, this is the format that is uh, GitLab path. Yeah. So then you have the, uh, the, then this is the uh, this is the your you know GitLab OU that is organization uh, name actually, and after that, after that you're gonna provide your you know GitLab repository name, and let it be reference underscore type it will let it be like this, then the branch so in the branch you will be saying like a you know, branch colon reference, and which branch you want to point to that is a main branch yeah, and after that GitLab.com you know you will have to provide the uh, audience as well so here audience is you know https colon gitlab.com in sense this is the audience which gonna trust this particular role okay so if i show you again so this is my gitlab account i have already logged in here this is my org and underneath that org i have this repository which is where i'm showing the demo and that's the reason i have added if you see here this is my org for slash my repo name yeah and then you have the branch name right all right, so all these are the configurations that you need to maintain in the trust policy and click on the update, right? So with that, you know, you have successfully completed the, you know, the OIDC, um, you know, the trust policy that you need to actually keep uh, in the AWS side, okay? So what did you do here is basically you created an identity provider, you created an IAM role, you added the trust policy, which the explanation I have given here, right? So with that note, let's go to the, you know, then let's go to the other side. That is the consumer side, which is basically GitLab. So you can also create a GitLab account like me um, saying like, you know, just go to the gitlab.com and create an account for you. It's a free for, you know, there's a free versions being given from GitLab. You can, you consume it and do a hands-on experience as well. You can do that. So far now I have already created a, a repo called AWS hyphen OIDC because I'm showing the OIDC connect of this demo in this demo. So along with that, so you need to do one more thing so once the im role is created you have the arn right so if you see that this is the arn of the this role so the arn of this role has to be kept as a variable on this repository that is aws oidc to do that you have to go to the settings first and in the settings go to the ci cd if you click on the ci cd it will take you to the another path so there you will find a variables so there's a variable option here click on expand and here you can click on i have already added saying like you know role underscore arn has to be added here so click on like this add variable, give the value something like this. Yeah. And give the value that is the ERN of the, the role IAM role, which we created just now. Click on this one, click on the add variable, the variables will be added. Okay. So this is a, a prerequisite on the GitLab repository side. Once this is done, let's go to the uh, repository again. 
no i'm going to show you that you know under this repository i have only one branch called main branch and in this branch i have kept only gitlab hyphen dot yaml file so let me click on this one so under this repository i have only one workflow file that is dot hyphen gitlabs dot ci yaml file right so in this one so this is where the actually the, you know we are telling the gitlab hey you need to use this format get the required token from jwt to uh, identity get the get the required jwt uh, token from oidc connect use it with the im role send it to the aws get it authorized then you will be author you know authenticated inside the aws account or, or you will be authorized to you know log into the aws account okay so how do you do that so there is a syntax that you need to follow here so basically so what you do is as you know that you know in every machine it could be linux or it could be windows we will have you know we will have a folder structure called dot aws forward slash config right so we are using saying like you know we are updating a folder under the user called dot aws config so in that config we are keeping the aws config authentications and that would be used by the you know uh, oidc connect so how does that happen let me tell you here so first one in the script before the script part we are running a command called make a directory uh, and with the director name would be you know something like for slash dot aws so this is this is going to create uh, um, you know the user directory called uh, aws and to that directory what you are doing is you're gonna pass the cicd job jwt version 2 so basically this is the you know uh, the keyword from gitlab which actually retrieves a certain jwt token yeah um, right so and that would be passed under a temp web identity token so that value would be passed here so this is this is by you now built in uh, see a built in variable that you you know that will be inherited by the gitlab you just you just have to keep it as it is and then in the next line you know we are also doing the same thing that is we are echoing and putting in a some file basically yeah and how did we do that so basically this is the syntax that you have to follow that is profile oidc backward slash and role that is the uh, role arn this is the actually the you know the gitlab refers to the I uh, you know this CI/CD pipeline settings. Go to the variable. The in variable, we kept the you know our uh, OIDC role ARN, right? So that role ARN will be interpolated, and and the value retrieved out of that variable will be kept here. And then you have the N Web Identity Token file. So that token file will be referenced from this one. And finally, the output of this command, that is this, would be pasted in the dot aws for slash config file which is the path which we created above right so basically a config file will be created in this three steps you know in the sense three format yeah and after that so once you are done with that basically you know you have almost done with the you know using the oidc connect which is hosted on a or using the oidc connect based authentication which is uh, which is already configured in a aws yeah and then we will declaring some job here that is a test access is the job that i'm running it here with using the gitlab image saying like this is the cli because i'm running the aws cli so i will be using a machine which has aws latest cli installed in it so that's the image name and the entry part i'm just keeping it default in the variables you know we are targeting to the region that is us east and the profile name i'm just keeping it like ODC. but in your case you can change the name of the profile something like this okay and finally once the aws cli is installed and you have already you know uh got an authentication and you got the authorized to your aws account then you are free to run the aws cli commands like aws sts galler you know get a caller identity aws s3 list aws ec to describe instance okay basically you know you can run these aws cli so here what you i think that you have observed that you know here i'm not storing any i am user secret and the key right so in the traditional days we used to store somewhere else and use it but here if you see I'm just referring the you know uh, uh, role ARN. That's all, right? And automatically, I would be allowed to authorize, you know, allowed to uh, get authenticated to my AWS account, and I can run my job to that account. Basically, if you go to this, if you copy this and and do the same thing from the another repository of the GitLab, GitLab, maybe it will not work. Why? Because that is everything will be configured here. Okay, that's what makes the difference. Yeah. All right. So with that note. I think I have covered the you know um, uh, the code walkthrough now. Let's see how does it works now, right? So to show that I have to go to the CI/CD and let's trigger the pipeline. I have already tested it from my side. I'm going to show you again. So I will go to the pipe run pipeline. I will click on the run pipeline and and let's see you know. So here run for the branch. Okay, so that is something you can choose it. So I'm choosing the main branch because we have kept the main branch here. 
right so we have kept the main branch so we should be choosing that only and you see the job has started i will go to the jobs i click on the job so basically we have one job that is uh, running and the output will be shown here right if you see here so basically when you say image in the sense you know gitlab under the hood you know every job it creates a you know uh, a part out of that it's, it's creates a docker image if you see here it's actually creating a part and in that part you know it's actually executing the commands okay that's what it does and here you go it has successfully you know run the it has successfully established the connection to the aws account and also ran the command yeah that's a very important point here so i'm going to walk you through that basically you know we it did the aws um, um, uh, repository it does it did the actually create a, a directory called dot aws and then echo party is also pushed to the web underscore entity token and then in the echo you know you see the you know it has also passed the you know config file and then it has you know, already run the command that is aws sts get caller identity so this is the output it has written and then it i know so basically so once these three commands are run basically you know it has achieved the oidc connection oidc based authentication and it has established a connection to the aws account and then it has ran the couple of aws cli commands you know with these commands will work only when you have you have the profile been set right and profile will be set when you have already authorized to the aws account okay for your information so this is what it returned actually so it's actually returning the required thing and it's also listing the s3 bucket you see i have these other s3 bucket i can show you that as well so if i go to the bucket so if i go to the s3 bucket so i'm going to show you that you know it's actually working so why i'm giving all these you know so that you know you are confident that you know it will gonna work uh, from your side when you try like this yeah so basically we run the list s3 we also described the issue instance unfortunately i don't have any issue instance because those are all costly i have the bucket so if you see here so here you go chart gpt bucket 100 right so that that bucket is already here yeah all right so basically you know this is how we do a oidc connect from gitlab to aws account okay finally i'm done with the you know the things need to be shown in this video uh, and finally a kind request please do subscribe my channel that would really encourage me a lot so with that note thank you thanks a lot and see you in the next video